Next on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend, an alleged hit and run driver accused of killing a six year old boy behind bars this morning after police follow tips from the community. A man is dead after a hike in the Franklin Mountains goes horribly wrong, forcing police to shut down a popular area. And we're learning more about what led to the shooting death of an NBA star's family member in Chicago. In the Storm Track Weather, Stephen. That first alert remains in effect. More unsettled weather in the forecast for today and the next several days. I'll have those details coming up. Here's all the news you need to start your Sunday, August 28th. ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend starts right now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend. Well, good morning, El Paso, and thank you for joining us. I'm Andrew J. Polk. ABC 7 has reported on several mountain rescues this season alone, but now we're working to learn more about the first fatal mountain, mountain climbing accident this year. Yesterday afternoon, combined search and rescue teams were called out to McKelligan Canyon around 2.30 to rescue a 21-year-old man. That area is popular with hikers and runners along the road. Fire officials say the man was hiking with a friend when he fell. Crews were able to locate the two, but it took several hours before a Medvac helicopter arrived to take the man to a hospital. Our crews were there as police officers closed the canyon and forced park goers to leave. It's unclear how far the man fell or how he fell, but officials say he had life-threatening injuries and was transported to University Medical Center where he died. Fire officials are not yet releasing his name. And we're expecting to see more storms throughout the borderland today and possibly the start of the work week. Getting to storm track weather, storm track meteorologist Stephen Decatur has what we can expect for the start of your Sunday morning. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Andrew. We are in that wet pattern once again, and that wet weather is going to lead to some possible flash flooding once again this afternoon, much like what we saw yesterday. Not everyone's going to see the rain, but it's certainly possible, and when it does fall, it's going to fall hard and fast. You can see already some thunderstorms getting going over the Gila Mountains near Silver City. Some of that moisture is going to work into our area by the end of the day. So again, afternoon thunderstorms possible once again. That day planner shows nice conditions around noontime, only a 10% chance of rain, but those rain chances greatly increase by this evening to 50%, and temperatures will top off in the upper 80s, a little below average for this time of year. So that first alert's in effect, rain chances remaining high through the next few days, plus showers and thunderstorms again this afternoon, and possible flash flooding these next few days. I'll have more details coming up. Andrew? Diane, thanks, Stephen. Check back in just a bit. And the storms and wind were in the area during a church bazaar when things went wrong. Police say it happened around 8 yesterday evening at the Cristo Ray Church on the 8,000 block of Willamette in East El Paso. Our crews found the stage taped off, lights hanging up front. It's unclear how the lights fell, but witnesses tell ABC 7 that it was a child and an adult that were injured and had to be taken to a hospital after those lights fell. Police tell ABC 7 the injuries were not serious, though. And we're still working to get more information. As soon as we find out any more, we'll let you know on air and online at KVI.com with the latest. And the search for the driver responsible for killing a six-year-old boy in Anthony, New Mexico is over. Police arrested 53-year-old Jose Brasino yesterday. They say he struck Sebastian Angel Fragoso seen here on Thursday and then fled the scene. Sebastian Fragoso was a first grader at Gadsden Elementary School and he was struck while riding his bike. The crash happened at Putter and 4th Street, that's in Anthony, New Mexico. The Anthony Police Department called a news conference late last night. Officers say they started following leads yesterday morning after the Anthony community gave law enforcement several leads to follow. Officers found the white truck they were looking for yesterday morning just five minutes from the corner where Sebastian was hit. Police say they reached out to the owner and brought them in to be interviewed. It was after that questioning that Jose Brasino was arrested around 7 p.m. and charged with leaving the scene of an accident involving death and failure to render aid. For uh, all the work they did and for helping us with this case and for, for everything they've done. I'd like to see him pay for what he has done. He took away my son's life, and I want to see him pay for that. Brasino is currently being held at the Duniana County Detention Center. Happening today, a vigil will be held in Las Cruces for the 10-year-old girl who police say was brutally murdered by her mother and two other people. Victoria Martins was found dead in her Albuquerque apartment on Wednesday. Police arrested her mother, Michelle Martins, her boyfriend, Fabian Gonzalez, and his cousin, Jessica Kelly. This case to say the three suspects drugged, raped, stabbed, choked, and dismembered the little girl. Victoria had just turned 10 years old a day before she was murdered. 
The vigil in Las Cruces will begin at 6 this evening. It will take place at the Farm and Ranch Museum at 4100 Dripping Springs. If you decide to attend, you're asked to bring balloons and cupcakes. Candles will be provided. The Baby Brianna Birthday Committee and Foundation will also be there to celebrate her life. In Chicago, police say a dispute involving an Uber driver is what led to the shooting of NBA star Dwayne Wade's cousin. They say two men had an argument with the driver that escalated into that shooting. 32-year-old Nikea Aldridge was caught in the crossfire as she pushed her baby in a stroller on the city's south side Friday afternoon. An innocent victim killed in a violent crime epidemic. She died 45 minutes after the incident, but her infant was not injured. The murder rate in Chicago is up a staggering 48% so far this year. On Thursday, just one day before Aldridge's death, Wade joined fellow players at an ESPN town hall to talk about the growing violence. It's about a whole coming together and understanding that, you know, it's deep-rooted. And this is something that didn't start today. Um, this is something that's not going to end tomorrow. Police say they're interrogating two persons of interest, while the Uber driver is also in their custody. None of those three is classified as a suspect as of now. And a man is facing two counts of capital murder after two nuns were found stabbed to death in their home in Mississippi. 46-year-old Rodney Earl Sanders is a man who allegedly killed the nurse practitioners who worked for a clinic in one of the state's poorest counties. Authorities say Margaret Held and Paula Merrill were found dead inside their rural town home Thursday morning. Those who knew the nuns say they had real empathy for compassion for those people they served. Everybody was the same in their eyes. You know, all you have to do is go to them, ask them for help, and they help you any way that they can. Authorities have not revealed a motive or a possible link between Sanders and the nuns. A pro football player is finding himself in the middle of controversy after he decided to not stand during the national anthem. I have to respect his right to do what he wants. It doesn't mean that I agree with it, and I don't. You know, it's, uh, it's the country that I fought for. It's the flag that I fought for. On Friday, San Francisco 49ers QB Colin Kaepernick sat on the team bench during the anthem before the preseason game against the Green Bay Packers. He later explained his reasoning in an interview with NFL media, saying, quote, I'm not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color, Kaepernick said, adding, quote, to me, this is bigger than football, and it would be selfish on my part to look the other way. There are bodies in the street and people getting paid leave and getting away with murder. You've had a lot of veterans who fought and have died for this country, for that flag, and him not to stand for it, that's, that's disrespectful, I mean. A spokesman for the NFL said players are, quote, encouraged but not required to stand during the national anthem. We want to know what you think about this issue. Feel free to share your comments on this story on our Facebook page right now. El Paso County Commissioners and University Medical Center staff and board members continue to meet to try to hash out the budget for next year, but more concerns could create further complications to nailing down all the details. There's a possibility that El Paso Children's Hospital, now under UMC's umbrella, could lose a key designation and that could ultimately affect taxpayers. Children's relies on a hospital within a hospital status to ensure it continues to get Medicaid reimbursements. It can't take tax revenue, but University Medical Center leaders have already started pushing for a roughly 6% increase in taxes from last year based on the way the current situation stands. We're looking at this budget in the context of that we are going to be a hospital within a hospital um, and I'm not completely sure that that is, is going to be what's happened. I know that, uh, that the Children's Board is working very hard to, to try to make that uh, a reality. County Commissioners did approve a proposed higher tax rate for UMC this past week. There will be several meetings and chances to directly address commissioners and administrators on the subject before it's fully voted into place. To find out more about when those are scheduled to happen, you can click on this story over on KVIA.com. And of course, don't forget to pick up your copy of the El Paso Inc. This week, only in El Paso Inc., while the Army is selling 1,500 acres in Far East El Paso, what it means for development in the fast-growing region. But El Paso businessman wants to be the city's youngest mayor ever as well, and why Estela Casas never wanted to be mayor. And there's a new magazine in town, El Paso Inc. magazine. Find out about the quarterly lifestyle magazine that's taken the town by storm. El Paso Inc. is online at elpasoinc.com and available for home and business delivery. Call the number there at the bottom of your screen, 534-4422 to subscribe. And happening today, the El Paso Vietnam Veterans Parade will be marching through downtown. It's part of the Welcome Home El Paso Vietnam Veterans Organization's events. The festivities start at 10 a.m. beginning on North Florence and Myrtle Avenue. 
Then at 12 p.m. there will be a recognition dinner with mariachis at the Coliseum. It's free for all Vietnam veterans and one guest. Additional guest tickets are sold for $20. And it's a celebration that's the first of its kind in the U.S. Yesterday, dozens of families showed up in Mesilla Park Community Center to celebrate the Tarahumara culture. Families were able to learn more about the historic culture through a run and informational booths. The indigenous Mexican tribe from the Sierra Madre Mountains is famous for its running abilities. One man we spoke with says that the culture is not centered around material possessions, but about the simple life. The Tarahumaras, they are living a very simple life. They are just living according to their culture, just trying to be in harmony with the mother nature. It's the Tarahumaras, the indigenous Mexican tribe, is from Copper Canyon in the Sierra Madres. And Donald Trump isn't known for taking it safe on the campaign trail exactly, but coming up on Good Morning El Paso weekend, there's more backlash from his latest attempt to try to reach out to minority voters. And some major weather hitting the borderland, what our viewers saw from all across the region. And it is just before 8-11 right now, taking a live look at the ABC7 traffic track system this morning. Pretty much green around the board. One little speck of yellow looking on Montana near Loop 375, but otherwise pretty clear conditions out there. Roads hopefully drying up a bit this morning, but we still have more to worry about in storm track weather. Stephen. A first alert is in effect. It's a very nice start to the day, but more showers and thunderstorms expected to de develop this afternoon. I'll have those details coming up.